Judges 17 and 18 is, honestly, uh, Faith and Ron, what a day for you guys to return. I'm glad to have you back. I wish it were a chapter with any gospel at all. Uh, but delighted to have you here. Uh, so, I've called it confusion and depravity. I don't know if we can make a running total of, of all of the sins and abuses that are committed here. Sometimes there are just too many to count, and that's what we have. But um, Pastor Dale Ralph Davis says that moving into this chapter after all of Judges, and, and even all of Judges going into this chapter, is like uh, moving from a paved road onto gravel. Because suddenly it's just different. It's, it's not even as firm as it used to be. Um, incidentally, I got this image randomly from searching the computer for just a picture of a gravel road. Guess where this is? It almost looks like the one outside of MVL. It's the road to MVL right now. Yeah, you can even see the washboarding. It, and I realized when I, when I looked for exactly what, what this is from, it's from the Brown County uh, Gravel Road Seminar or something that they were having for anybody who was interested in maintaining their local gravel road. And uh, no kidding, because of the, that when the, when the gravel road starts to bump and bumpity bumpity bump, it's called washboarding. Third bullet on this is how to prevent washboarding. I'm like, that's a good road to have up there to, because, uh, yeah, it's, it makes the car ride a lot of fun, or not. Yeah. So anyway, this chapter, these two, the, in fact, these five chapters, the whole end of the book, are very much like you, you've lost your footing, things are uncertain, and what's going on? We've, we've gone from 12 judges, from Othniel, back in the beginning, if you remember him, all the way to Samson, six major judges, six minor judges, and a maniac, uh, who was Gideon's son Abimelech, the anti-judge. So after them now, we have some stories, really two separate accounts of what it was like, maybe between judges or when there was nobody around and how vicious people could be to each other. Um, it, is, it is shocking and I think I'm going to stop trying to come up with adjectives. Because it's, it's just amazing um, the way that these chapters roll out. This is the third part of the book. And uh, anecdotes typical of life in Israel at the time of the judges, but in places where there weren't any judges. So lawlessness and religious chaos are what we're looking at. Okay, lawlessness and religious chaos. Chapter 17. A thief's son is made a priest for a little while. There was a, a man named Micah, no, not the prophet Micah, from the hill country of Ephraim. Uh, the hill country of Ephraim is just north of Judah. If you have a mental map of Israel, Judah is kind of in the middle. And then little Benjamin is a narrow strip of land just north of Jerusalem for a couple miles. And then kind of everything above that for a while is the hill country of Ephraim. Fair enough? Okay. Uh, he said to his mother, those 1,100 pieces of silver stolen from you that I heard you speaking a curse over? Well, here it is. I took that silver. I, I want to unpack that for a moment. 1,100 pieces of silver is equivalent in weight to four gallons of milk. That's a lot of silver, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like 28 pounds. A little, I think is a gallon of milk about six pounds? Something like that, six and a bit. So uh, is it? Uh, yeah, okay, all right, thank you. Um, but here we have a, a guy has stolen his own mother's, not just, I'm, when I was a little boy, my brother collected coins and some of his prized coins were buffalo nickels but sometimes I wanted a can of pop. And one day my brother said, how come one of my tubes of buffalo nickels is empty? And I think I burped. 
Uh, I'm, elabor- I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating a little bit there, but that's basically what, but I, I got caught and I felt very, very bad. And I've actually spent my life trying to collect enough buffalo, buffalo nickels to give them back to my brother. I'm almost 60 and I'm not done yet, but I'm still working at it. Maybe I should work harder. Anyway, buffalo nickels. Don't give me buffalo nickels. It's my task. Um, uh, so, but this, imagine this guy had stolen all of his mom's riches. All of it. And, and now imagine what kind of a filthy potty mouth she had that her curse made him so terrified that he gives it back. What had she cursed? May whoever took this silver of mine be, I don't know. I'm afraid to say. Uh, But whatever it was, he got terrified. He smelt the sulfur of hell drifting up from below his feet. And he gave back the silver. Sorry, Mom. Um, And what does she do? Then his mother said, my son, may you be Blessed by the Lord. <laughs> Last week, I took us through the, remember, the 33 uses of the P-A-L Hebrew verb. And, uh, and uh, uh, several of you fell asleep and one of you fell over. But uh, 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 I mean, that was a morning group, I don't remember. But uh, one of the P-A-L uses is where the word for bless, which is Baruch in Hebrew, if it shows up in this other stem, like in Job, where Job's wife says, curse God and die, that's the verb bless, but in this other stem. So it becomes curse instead of bless. That's the PL in verses, inversive, one of the 33 uses of the PL. This is not one of those. So she does not say, may you be cursed by the Lord, which is kind of what you might have expected her to say, but she says, blessed by the Lord. This is just a call passive, it's, it's okay. And she invokes the name of the Lord. So she knows who the true God is, correct? Or at least has heard his name before. But she's, she's kind of crazy, though. So what happens next is not what you'd expect. He returned the 1,100 pieces of silver to his mother. Here, Mom, 11 jugs or four, four jugs of milk of, of uh, silver. And she said, I completely dedicate this silver from my hand to the Lord for my son to make a carved image in a silver idol. What's that trombone sound on the game shows? Wah. Wah, wah. That's the one, yeah. She, so she, what, what, sin, what, 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 what commandment is she breaking right off the bat here? Number one. Number, if you're going to break a sin, why not number one? So, yeah, and uh, not just having a false god, but making one. In fact, making a couple. So, first of all, a carved image. So, they take the silver... Somebody carves a carved god, a little G.I. Joe, right? And then they plate it with silver or cover it in silver. And then they make a silver idol by making a mold and pouring molten silver into it to, to create this solid silver idol. So they make a couple of them. And it's going to get, that's not the end of the list, but they, they make a couple of these things. And then we have this strange sentence at the end of verse 3. And I don't know what to do with it. The sentence reads, I will give it back to you. But I don't know who's speaking to whom. Is it the son speaking to the mom? Is it the mom speaking to the son? Is it mom speaking to the Lord? I don't know. I should be able to tell you because in Hebrew, the word you, the, the, uh, the, the pronoun is different male or female, singular or plural, unless it's at the end of a sentence because then it gets written in pause and the the vowel gets lengthened out and then now I don't know who's talking to who. So if you said to me, Shalom Lecha, which is peace to you, that's masculine uh, second person singular. So you could say Shalom Lecha. And I would say, Shalom Lach, peace to all of you, right? Or if I met Marsha on the street and she said, Shalom Lacha, or Shalom, yeah, Lacha, peace to you, sir, I would say, Shalom Lach, peace to you, madam. So that Lach, and here it's in pause. I don't know who she's talking to. Is it God? Is it the boy? Is it, you know, I don't know. Or is it the boy talking to mom? 
Could be any of those. So, I'm sorry. Doesn't change the theology. And uh, I think it might have been the uh, Kurt and Barbara Olland, who are the German New Testament manuscript geniuses of the 20th century. Um, the Nestle Olland New Testament is the Greek New Testament that translators use uh, typically. Um, and uh, their estimate is that in the whole Bible, it's either 95 or 98 percent. I don't know which one it is. Ron, have you heard this statistic of, of all the variants in the Bible? It's either 98 or 95 percent are the are alternate spellings of proper names. So which which one is it? This one or that one? It doesn't make any difference, right? So how you uh, how you how you spell it? Yeah, go ahead, Neil. Go. Uh huh. Yeah, I made it two sentences because I don't know who's speaking. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is my translation. Ah. Yeah. Sorry, it's not the NIV or the EHV. Ah, this is just Smith. Oh. So, and there's even a typo in it. So I apologize. Yeah, yeah. But I separated them because I, I can't, I don't know who's speaking. Yeah. Isn't the grammar, though, if it's in the same sentence, it's the same person? But it, it, in Hebrew, I don't, I, this isn't the same sentence. It could be somebody else speaking. So I, that's why I set it off. So, that, I mean, that's, that's how formatting happens, is when you have a change of speaker. And I don't know who the speaker is. So, that's, that's my issue here. Yeah, so anyway, I'm only me, so I can't do better than me. What a terrible thing to have to be. Okay, anyhow. So, so he returned the silver to his mother, and she took 200 pieces of silver, 5%, 5.5%, and gave it to, oh, and gave it to a smith. Ugh. And he made it into a carved image and a silver idol, and it was in Micah's house. So this guy, Micah, and his mom, uh, by the way, he's old enough to have children of his own, almost grown children. So that gives you their age differences. Uh, he's got these idols now, probably on a shelf in the house, probably right there in the kitchen or wherever. Um, now, the man Micah had a shrine to God, and he made an ephod, and some idols. Oh, let's stop there. Uh, so an, an ephod, can anybody tell me what an ephod is? It's the breastplate, yeah. So when I was in middle school, I had, uh, I had home ec and we had to learn how to use a sewing machine. I wish I remembered. Uh, but uh, uh, we had to make, the first thing we had to make was a pot holder that we were going to use. So it better be a decent pot holder because we are going to be baking cookies and stuff. And then we had to make our own apron. And it had to be a full body apron. So mine, you know, up to the neck and everything. And that top piece, if you can imagine that made of metal, that's an ephod. Okay. Remember that Aaron's, the high priests, had wasn't just a metal plate, but it had stuff on it? The 12 stones for the 12 tribes. Yeah, so this guy's was just an ephod, but also Aaron's had something else. When he tied this thing around his neck and, and around the back, there, I think, were pockets behind the metal plate because he also had, besides the 12 stones, two rocks. The A rock and the Z rock. Or uh, really, it's, it's, it was the Aleph and the Tav the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Urim and the Thummim. Urim starts with the Hebrew letter Aleph. Thummim starts with Tav, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So um, the, they, they seem to, I think they're yes, no rocks, so that they would, maybe the guy would put them in or put them behind his back or whatever. And, uh, you know, did you ever do that? Like, guess which hand it's in? That kind of thing, and you have to pick one, and you know, oh, that's yes or that's no, or or whatever he did, or he came out with one. And do you remember in the story, um, Joshua had just used these when um, they uh, 
uh, when they, when, when they uh, conquered Jericho, something went wrong after they conquered Jericho. And the Lord told Joshua, someone has stolen something. They were supposed to burn it all and somebody stole. And they went around tribe to tribe. And the tribe fell to whichever tribe it was. Was it, was it Simeon or Judah? I forget what. And it got down to the family of Achan. And he turned out to have stolen some wedges of silver or whatever and an outfit or something like that. And, and so and he confessed his sin and so forth. So that was using the Urim and the Thummim. So did Micah make yes, no rocks for his ephod also? And would they have even worked? Or, or whatever this was. But, uh, and then, and some idols. So, uh, okay. His mother had created a whole new denomination. So this woman decided, I'm going to make a religion of my own. I don't know anything about Moses, but I'm gonna, we're going to worship the Lord. And we're going to have idols and lots of idols. And uh, the, this, this uh, breastplate and all this stuff. And, and, and then Micah ordained uh, the, 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 the old lady's grandson, one of his own sons, to be his priest? Is that how you become a priest? Today, what is it that makes a pastor for a congregation what actually is it that sets him apart? The same two answers came up this morning. It's the call. Um, and then the ordination or installation is the public declaration of this. But it's the congregation asking him the call that makes the, 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 the minister. We prefer to call trained men. Um, who have even qualified for a degree in the a master's degree in theology. Um, uh, however, we wouldn't have to. Saint Augustine, uh, back in the fourth century, had an example of this. He said, imagine uh, a shipwreck, and now two men escape in the lifeboat. And uh, in addition to whatever lifeboats are stuffed with, you'd hope a paddle, right? Maybe a flare gun, fourth century flare gun? I don't know. And uh, uh, whatever else you need to get to Gilligan's Island. But in the boat is a Bible, Augustine says. And they've never read the Bible before. They're unbelievers. But then as they're on the water, they read the Bible. And one of them says, will you forgive my sins? And the other guy says, your sins are forgiven. And then that guy says, and will you baptize me? And the first guy baptizes him. And Augustine says, what, is, what has just happened here? We have the word of God, right? Two or more gathered in his name. We have the church. We have a correct use of the sacrament, the forgiveness of sins. This is the church. It's two guys who used to be unbelievers and then this afternoon they became believers and now we got baptized believers and they're proclaiming the word of God and forgiveness to each other. That's the, church. That's the call. That's the, that's the essence of the call. Um, so uh, this guy in uh, verse 5 ordains one of his sons to be priest. He, that's just more of being fingered. You know, being what made to be a priest. Have I told you, I probably have told you guys in the back the story of Mark when he got called up to be a priest. Mark, by Mark, I mean the guy who wrote the second gospel. Have I told you this story before? The, 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 the account we're given, and this is kind of a legend about Mark, but I think it, there's some merit to it. Mark had a weird nickname, Colobodactylus. Um, and uh, the, the way he got that nickname is that he was from the, he, he and his cousin Barnabas, we know, were both from the tribe of Levi. Gentlemen, downstairs, second door on your left. God bless you. Sorry to those listening at home. Okay, we'll go back. Uh, 
Mark uh, and Barnabas were both Levites. Mark accidentally, well, turned 30. Oops. So he gets the message, you're now drafted, you're called up, you have to go be a priest in the temple, Mark. No more uh, spreading the gospel for you. Now you've got to go back and work as a priest in the temple and offer sacrifices with the Jews. So what did Mark do? Well, what would disqualify me as a priest? So he cuts the end of his fingers off. And they call him stumpy. Colobodactylus means stump-fingered. So he maimed himself on one, on one hand, which disqualified himself for priestly service. You could not be maimed and, ha- and be in priestly service. So he chose, he chose that. Um, so no, no cut finger. I think the other one was no crushed testicle. So he chose the finger option, of course. Um, and, uh, and then they, they got that weird nickname, and that's Mark. Um, well, here, this guy gets fingered by uh, his own dad, and, the, and grandma, I don't know, ordains him. And, and, then, and, and as we're reading this and wondering what else could go wrong here, the uh, author steps in as if to say, no, you're, <laughs> the, the scrolls didn't get mixed up. You're in the right book. And he says, in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did whatever seemed right in his own eyes. Yeah. So it only took him five verses to realize, I better tell people this is the right chapter. Uh, uh, So then he continues after this. Now, there was a young man from Bethlehem in Judah. That's a good sign, except here. Uh, Who do we know from Bethlehem besides Jesus? David, yeah. There was a young man from Bethlehem in Judah, from the division of Judah. Why would we be told division of Judah if he was a Levite? Aaron, do you have it? I was thinking that there were Levites living among all of the others. Yeah, there were Levites. And in fact, they were assigned to various regions. Um, and the Levites had Levitical cities, which also usually were cities of refuge. So he, he would have been assigned to the tribe of Benjamin as one of their local Levites. What did a local Levite did, do? He would have taught children. He would have taught kids to read and write and stuff like that and taught them their Moses and so forth. That's, that would have been his main task. Um, but he was a Levite, descended from Gershom. Anybody know who Gershom was? It's Moses' son. Yeah. In fact, if you remember the story of Moses, at one point, uh, the Lord, Moses is is going back to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. And the Lord, in a storm, comes screaming across the desert to kill Moses. Do you remember why? Gershom wasn't wasn't circumcised. So Moses' wife has to circumcise her son, and she gets mad. So there's a little tiff in the family there, but she does it. But that was Gershom. I don't know how old he was when that happened. You know, was he four? Or, you know, or or, or was he two? Or how old was he? I don't know. Anyway, so he was a Levite, descended from Gershom. And, whoa, what just happened? Did that happen to you too? No. Got, okay. I hit the plus sign instead of the enter sign. So, he left the town of Bethlehem in Judah to find some other place to stay. As he made his way, he came to Micah's home in the hill country of Ephraim. Why did he leave Bethlehem? He leaves the territory he, was, he should have been assigned to. Um, hmm. That's, I'm just going to leave that hang out there, okay? Micah asked him, where do you come from? He answered, I'm a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah, and I'm looking for a place to stay. Micah replied, stay with me. Can I, I'm just going to insert this. He didn't do a background check. That might have been wise. I'm going to come back to that point a couple of times here. Stay with me. Be my father and priest. And I will give you ten silver shekels a year along with your clothing and food. 
So be my father is not common in the Old Testament for somebody who's not your dad or grandpa, but it does get used. David, I think David calls, uh, yeah, calls Saul my father at some point and, and other times. So. so the Levite moved in and agreed to stay with the man and the young man was like one of his sons to him. So he comes in. But now, wasn't Micah's son already ordained as priest? What happened to him? I'm sorry. Your time with us is over now, son. You know what? I don't know. That's, that's, that's my godfather. It was awful. But so he's out. Did he quit? Did he leave? Did he die? Uh, did the Lord put him to death because of the idols they were using? Uh, what happened? Well, anyway, this new guy comes in. Um, and or maybe he just gets bumped in favor. Oh, we got a real Levite. Sorry, son. Back to the salt mine for you or whatever it was. Micah consecrated the Levite, also not how you make a pastor, and the young man became his priest and lived in his home. Then Micah said, now I know that the Lord will be good to me because this Levite has become my priest. Is he a good luck priest or what's going on here? It's, uh, uh, they, can I just ask, did they do anything right in this whole chapter? Oh, the chapter's over. That's it. That was chapter 17. And nobody's done, not only has, have they all done as, they, as, as seemed right in their own eyes, but nobody's done anything right at all. So, huh. Unless the son who got consecrated as priest left, then maybe he did. But, but nobody else. All right. Anything on chapter 17? <laughs> let's all right chapter you've been listening to invisible church the bible study podcast from saint paul's lutheran church new all minnesota